Here we're given dy over dx equals xy cubed, and we are asked to find the particular solution y equals f of x with the initial condition f of 1 equals 2. Let's first separate our variables. To do this, we'll divide both sides by y cubed, and we can multiply both sides by dx. So here we have 1 over y cubed dy is equal to x dx. At this point we can integrate both sides, but before we integrate it might be easier to rewrite 1 over y cubed as an exponent so that we could later use power rule. So here we have the integral of y to the negative 3 dy is equal to the integral of x dx. Using anti-power rule we add 1 to the exponent, so we have y to the negative 2, and then we divide by that number, negative 2. Now, ordinarily, we would include a plus c right here, except we want to have our plus c on the right-hand side, so we'll put the plus c there. The antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared, and here we have our plus c. At this point, we could either plug in our initial condition in order to find c, but I find it easier to try to get my y value isolated before doing that. So let's multiply everything by negative 2. So here we have y to the negative 2 is equal to 1 half x squared times negative 2 is negative x squared, and our constant c times negative 2 is just some new constant c. I love C. C is amazing how it can multiply by negative 2 and still remain unchanged. And at this point, we can plug in our initial condition, which was given by 1, 2. So when x equals 1, our function value is equal to 2. So let's plug in 2 into y. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 4. And this is equal to negative 1 squared is negative 1 plus c. We can add both sides by 1, and that yields c is equal to 5 over 4, because 1 over 4 plus 1 is 5 over 4. At this point, we can now plug our c back into the equation that we're working on. So we have y to the negative 2 is equal to negative x squared plus 5 over 4. Now a lot of times to get rid of the negative 2 in the exponent you might want to multiply or raise both sides to the power of negative 1 half. But I'll definitely advise against that. Let's flip it and let's do this all by hand. So we have 1 over y squared is equal to negative x squared plus 5 over 4. A pretty nifty trick in order to solve for a variable that's in the denominator is just to flip both sides. But if I flip the left hand side to get y squared, I have to flip the entire right hand side. That means that we're flipping the entire right hand side. So we have 1 over quantity negative x squared plus 5 over 4. At this point, we can now take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. However, if we take the square root of the right-hand side, we need to include a plus or minus by our rules of quadratics. However, oftentimes, this doesn't actually work out the way that we want it to. I'll show you in just a moment. So here we have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 over negative x squared plus 5 over 4. When looking at a particular solution to a differential equation, either my solution is going to be above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So either 
my function value is negative or my function value is positive. The question is, how do I know whether y is positive or negative? Whenever you take the square root of both sides and end up with a plus or minus in front of your x side, here's what you do to figure out whether y is positive or negative. You look at the initial condition. Here, the initial condition is that we have 1 comma 2. 1 comma 2 lies above the x-axis. That means that we're looking at a particular solution that is above the x-axis. So, what this means is y is positive, and therefore the square root is also positive. Now let's just clean this up a little bit and we'll be done. Here we have y is equal to, the square root of 1 is just 1 over the square root of 5 over 4 minus x squared. Now a lot of times you will be asked to find the domain of the particular solution. Here our domain is restricted because we have x in our denominator as well as inside of the square root. So at this point, let's solve the domain. 5 over 4 minus x squared. First of all, it can't be 0 because that would give us a 0 in the denominator and we can't divide by 0. Also, it can't be negative because then we'd be taking the square root of a negative number. So it must be greater than 0. At this point, we can factor, but you might be saying, hey, how can we factor? Simple. Difference of squares. I know, I know, 5 over 4 is not a perfect square. However, if you take the square root of it, you get root 5 over 2. And we'll do that plus x times root 5 over 2 minus x. And this is all greater than 0. We can now do a line analysis to determine when our function will be greater than 0. So here we have x equals negative root 5 over 2 as a 0 and positive root 5 over 2 as a 0. And now we can check in the intervals to see when 5 over 4 minus x squared is going to be positive and when it's going to be negative. If we look in between we can check x equals 0. 5 over 4 minus 0 that's positive. Let's look to the left of negative root 5 over 2. How about, oh, I don't know, negative 10. 5 over 4 minus 100, way negative. Let's try positive 100. 5 over 4 minus positive 100, still going to be negative. Therefore, everything is going to be positive in between negative root 5 over 2 and positive root 5 over 2 not including them because then we would have a zero. And so, our domain is negative root 5 over 2 is less than x is less than root 5 over 2.